Alright, in this video I'm going to talk about using combinations to do counting. Um, and combinations basically are when you're doing the following scenario. You're counting without replacement and the order does not matter. So this is one thing that you have to think about and definitely be aware of. It says the total number of combinations if we have n objects to select from taken r at a time um, and these are some different notations that at least come to my mind. Um, this one and this one maybe being the two most common, at least the two that I've seen the most. Um, but the formula that's important that you need to remember is this n factorial over n minus r quantity factorial and then r factorial. So I'm going to do some examples, just numerical examples using um, just calculating the formula and then we'll do some word problems. So in this first one it says you have five, and this is often read, five choose two. You have five objects, you're choosing two of them. The formula just says you take the top number factorial, five minus two factorial, and then another two factorial. And you know we can do this by hand, this is five factorial. Just simplify the inside, you'll get 3 factorial times 2 factorial. And again, this doesn't somehow make like 6 factorial or don't do anything weird with the factorials on the bottom. What this does mean though is you have 3 times 2 times 1, that's my 3 factorial, and I'm going to do this a little quicker in the next examples. And then 2 factorial is 2 times 1, I guess I should have wrote the top out too. 5 factorial is 5 times 3 times 2 times 1 over 3 times 2 times 1 and then we have another 2 times 1 well you can cancel out the 3 times 2 times 1 with a 3 times 2 times 1 in, in the denominator and what are you left with? You have 20 over 2 and that just turns out to be equal to 10 Okay, so 5 choose 2 is equal to the number 10 likewise 8 choose 6 you get 8 factorial on the top and all you basically do is you subtract the two numbers so 8 minus 6 is going to be 2 factorial and then we've got 6 factorial notice 8 factorial is 8 times 7 times 6 times 5 all the way down likewise 6 factorial is well 6 on down if you expand the 8 factorial and the 6 factorial things will cancel out starting at the 6's so on top you would just be left with 8 times 7 and then 2 factorial is just 2 times 1. 8 over 2 is 4. 4 times 7 is 28. So this 8 choose 6 equals 28. Let's do a couple of uh, actual word problems here. Um, and I did a problem similar to this using permutations in the other video. So in this case, suppose you have 10 horses and they're all running a race and you would like to know in how many ways three horses can finish in first, second, or third in any order. So maybe you win if horse A comes in first, horse B comes in second, and horse C comes in third. That's one sort of way for horse A, B, C, D, E, F, G, suppose it keeps going those horses to come in first, second, third. Suppose again you bet on horse A, B, C. Maybe they come in B, C, A. Well the three horses you bet it on still come in first. It doesn't matter the order. So these are considered equivalent um, outcomes. The same horses finish in the top three places and you could list the other ones as well. Well again the basic idea in this problem is you have ten horses to choose from and we're going to choose three of those. So using our previous formula, this is 10 factorial, you can subtract that 7 factorial times 3 factorial. Again, um, the, the 7 factorial will cancel out a lot of the 10 factorial. You'll just be left with 10 times 9 times 8 over 3 times 2, there's 3 factorial. Let's see if we can't do this one by hand. 3 goes into 9 3 times, 2 goes into 8 4 times, so we're left with 10 times 3 which is 30 times 4 which is 120. So I think I did that okay. 
So basically, if you're just counting the number of ways that 10 horses, and again, you're looking at the first three of them, sort of the ways that the 10 horses can, can place in first, second, and third, there's an equivalent 120 different outcomes. All right, I got two more here. It says on this one, again, kind of a basic one, on a test, a student must select six out of 10 questions. And how many ways can this be done? So suppose you've got a multiple choice. You've only got to, got to choose six of the 10 questions. Well, again, it's 10. You're choosing six of them. And the formula, again, the order you select the answers doesn't really matter. Maybe you do you know, the first six, but maybe you do them in the order 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. You've still answered the same six questions. So this is 10 factorial. You take their difference, which is 4 factorial, 6 factorial. Again, the 6 factorial will cancel out with a lot of the 10 factorial. You'll be left with 10 times 9 times 9 times 8 times 7. And then the rest of it will cancel out with the 6 factorial. Then you have 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. Let's see if we, again, can't do this by hand. The 4 times 2 will cancel out with the 8. The 3 will go into 9 3 times. So then I'm left with 10 times 3 times 7, which is 210. So if you've only got to select 6 questions out of 10, there's, in a, well, there's basically 210 different exams that you could take where at least one of the questions is different. All right, last but not least, to all the poker fans out there, um, poker's gotten big here, at least in the U.S. I actually like to play poker. Um, so in this example, it says, um, and hopefully you're familiar with a 52-card deck. Um, if not, you know, I would say turn it off now. This probably isn't going to make a lot of sense. But suppose you're playing poker and you have a five-card, you want to know how many five-card poker hands consisting of three aces and two cards that are not aces are possible. And you are again um, selecting from a 52 card deck. So this one's a touch different because what do you have to do? We're looking for the number of ways that you can select three aces out of four aces and we're also looking for one other event to occur. We then want um, how many other two cards that are not aces. Well, let's think about it. There's 52 cards. We don't want any one of the four aces, which means we need to select another two cards out of a possible 48 choices. There's 48 non-ace cards. Again, and statements, if you go back to the multiplication principle, indicate multiplying. So we've got to select three aces out of four aces. So we have four cards to choose from. We're going to choose three of those. And means we multiply. Then we have 48 cards. And we want to select, whoops, that shouldn't be a fraction. I knew I was going to do that. 48 choose two. Let me just rewrite this. I've got enough time. So no fraction, sorry about that. 4 choose 3 times 48 choose 2. I almost did it again. And you can evaluate these numbers on your own. I'll let you check them. So this is 4 factorial over 1 factorial. If you do the 4 minus 3 times 3 factorial, and then you'll have 48 factorial over 46 factorial times 2 factorial. You can check my arithmetic here. I got this to be the number 4512. So that's the number of different poker hands where you can have a full house um, with three aces and then two other cards that are not aces. So again, a full house, pretty good hand. It looks like maybe there's a lot of ways for it to happen, but we really haven't looked at all the number of possible poker hands yet. So maybe this number is actually small in comparison. If you have any other questions, feel free to vi visit my website. Um, there's a lot of other videos there. Likewise, feel free to uh, send me an email if I can answer your question. I'll be happy to do so.